Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Welcome to the study of why does Satan create false converts. We are going to do basically, um, I got into a discussion with people about did Jesus pay for the sins, everybody, the lost world sins, present tense, and I tried coming in here and I tried doing that study. I was like going there trying to see what I wanted to see and I did the study and got corrected by God but I also got confirmation about a lot of things I was standing for. So as I was doing that I asked a brother in Christ, you know, where does it say that Jesus Christ paid for the sins of the world? Died but paid and he took me to second Peter chapter 2, and as I, it was no, I don't believe in coincidences, but that night, um, or a couple nights later, I got to my daily devotions, was going through First and Second Peter, and I came across one of my notes that I have over here where I make a list of studies that would be neat to do, and one of them was, why Satan, why does Satan create false converts? So I went from focusing on that study about did Jesus pay for the present tense, pay for a lost, Christ-rejecting sinner's sins? And God put it on my heart saying, hey, focus on this instead. So chapter 2 is almost like we're doing an expository study, and we're going to shift it over to books that are actually written to us. Now don't get me wrong, as I read through First and Second Peter, I realized the reason it gets confusing is I believe it's written to the Jews because it separates Gentiles from the per people that it's being written to. It separates it, and there's only Jews and Gentiles as far as the flesh. Um, so I believe it is addressed to the Jews. I mean, Peter is the apostle to the Jews. But what's kind of confusing is how it, it goes through different dispensations. It's talk, I believe it's talking to the Jews today in the, what we call the church age, and but there's times it's addressing the time of Jacob's trouble, there's times it's addressing the day of the Lord, the land of the kingdom, there's a part in there where it says heaven and earth is burned away, um, that's after the day of the Lord when we get the new heaven and the new earth, um, so it's going through different dispensations, so you've got to be very careful what you grab and try to apply it to today for doctrine. But the verse that he sent me was verse 1, and that's where we're going to start in this study. Um, so if you turn to 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, and we're gonna, this is going to be a long, long study, uh, multiple parts. Uh, I broke it down a lot, and as you know about my minis God's ministry through me, it's about words have meaning, so we'll be looking up definitions of words, um, and then see which definition applies in context. So... Verse 1, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Now, going off on a little bit of a side note, I will still do that study when, the God, when God actually you know, opens everything to me and gets me really motivated. Um, but when I looked at this, and you're looking at First and Second Peter, like I said, it's talking about different dispensations. It's addressing the Jews today, but different dispensations. Talk about the different dispensations. So when I looked at this, and I'm not, I didn't do a hardcore study on this, because that's for the next study, um, three ways to look at this. And you have to do the study to see which one's correct. Now in structure of righteousness, this could be all three. And I'm throwing the third one in there, because I'm being honest with you. I'm not going to just say, I'm just going to tell you what I believe and ignore everything, or I'm going to leave scripture out to prove, make my point right, like some of the teachers out there. And we're talking about false teachers in this one. False teachers will leave out verses purposely to make their point work. But three ways to look at this, okay? And I'll, the major one that's looked in this, I'll leave that for last. But one way is this. If you're trying to apply it to today, could it be talking about the falling away? The great falling away as more and more, what I believe, saved sinners are falling away. 
Okay. I mean, hear me out on this, okay? People say that they're denying the Lord that bought them and they're bringing in damn little heresies. What if you come across somebody who gets saved, repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, they confess both in prayer, it happens in their heart, their belief and repentance happens in the heart, it's not cleaning up your life, it happens in your heart, they confess it to God, showing that they're not ashamed of repentance and belief, they're not doing it just because they're going to be part of some club. They're not doing it because it's just insurance policy, just in case hell really exists. They call upon the name of the Lord and, they, and God saves them. Let's say three or four years down the road, they get pressured by the cares of the world. They get pressured by the lost family members that are part of the faith alone crowd. You know, you've earned salvation by your faith. And they go and they start thinking, you know what? Maybe it was just faith. I mean, I did everything, but maybe the faith part was the only thing that was important and the only thing that really got me saved. And they fall away from truth, absolute truth, the true biblical salvation. So now they're starting to say it's faith alone. They've fallen away. And what are they doing? They're teaching, they're bringing in damnable heresies. They're preaching a false gospel now. And they're denying the Lord that bought them. They're saved, but they're denying the Jesus Christ of the true gospel now. And they're going for a faith Jesus, which we'll be talking about later. You know, the faith alone crowd that has zero, uh, the real Jesus has zero tolerance for sin. But their Jesus, you know, it's all about love and peace and forgiveness. And, you know, you can still live like the devil. No change life. But they could fall away, pre-time of Jacob's trouble, to be in post-trib, mid-trib. Start preaching a false god. So to the lost world, they're preaching a false god of the post-trib and mid-trib. A god that will pour out his wrath on the righteous along with the wicked. A god that's going to pour his wrath out on himself, you know. Self-affliction, like, you know, people in the Catholic Church that beat themselves because they feel they have to suffer. Um, so that's one way because you're reading through it, because you've got to find out the context. Is it addressing the Jews, uh, like the church age? Because when it's addressing the Jews, and you feel, you do a study, and it's like it's addressing it to the church, what we call the church age, then it is for us. But it's still addressing the Jews specifically. Um, but we can use it for us, because it's, it's the church age. It's addressing saved Jews. But there's times it's addressing the Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. There's places in here that's addressing, talking about the day of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? So you've got to be careful about that. But if you're going to apply it to today, and it's still, like I said, one way to look at it, it's talking about people that have fallen away. They're denying the Lord that bought them. They've fallen away when it comes to damnable, and they start promoting damnable heresies. And they're bringing it in. Um, you've had teachers that are slowly doing it. Um, there's some teachers I believe are saved, but one of the big things is falling into the love of money. The love of money is the root of all evil, why some have coveted after they've pierced themselves through, or, oh gosh, I just screwed up, but pierced themselves with many sorrows. Um, I kind of said it wrong there at the end. Uh, so that's one way. The second way is if, if this is to address the people in the time of Jacob's trouble, what could, I mean, how can this be part of the time of Jacob's trouble? You have people that get saved. Jews that get saved, I mean, you've got Moses and Elijah coming and preaching the gospel to them. You have Jews that get saved, and I'm not talking about the ones that are sealed in their forehead. This is ones that aren't sealed in their forehead. They get saved. But what do they do? Some of them are going to take the mark of the beast. So when you take the mark of the beast, you lose your salvation and you go to hell. Or you're not right away, but you're going to go to hell. But what are they doing? They're denying the Lord that bought them. They're turning their back. The cares of this world, the hunger, the ratty clothes, living in the wilderness, freezing a lot. All this stuff gets to them and they give in and they take the mark of the beast. So there's the denying the Lord that bought them. Now, there's, they go back to those Jews and that they were, you know, the body, because it talks about in Hebrews where you're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. It's talking to the Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble because of how bad it's going to be. We can use it for instruction and righteousness today, but doctrine, we can't. It's addressed at the Jews. 
So it's going to be so bad, what if they start coming in to the Jews telling them, you know what, look at me, I got good clothes now. You know, I got food, I'm no longer starving, I got a warm bed to sleep in. There's nothing wrong with taking the mark of the beast. I mean, come on, you can take the mark of the beast. What are they doing? They're bringing in damn little heresies. They're bringing in damn little heresies and they denied the Lord that bought them. The third way to look at this one is that it's talking about lost professing Christians, false converts coming in and they're bringing in damnable heresies. They're lost to begin with, bringing in you know false gospel, uh, post-trib, uh, going against eternal security. And I've noticed people that are saved, I believe are saved, that are starting to fall back into that where they're not definitely saying you can lose your salvation, but you know, there might be, you know what I'm saying? And so this can apply to saved that are fallen away, it could apply to the saved in the time of Jacob's trouble that take the mark and promote people to take the mark. Saved that have fallen away, so then they start promoting heresies, damnable heresies to the world, lost people, trying to get them saved. Um, and it could apply to people that were never saved to begin with. Okay. I'm, I'm throwing that in there, okay? I'm not against that. Uh, the study I'm doing, like I said, I've been correcting a lot of things. So. We're going to get started. Why does Satan create false converts? So we're going to look up the definition of prophet. One that foretells the future events, a predictor, a foreteller. Definition number one. Two, in scripture, a person illuminated, inspired, or instructed by God to announce future events. As Moses, Elijah, David, Isaiah, um, etc. Number three. An interpreter, one that explains or communicates sentiments. Exodus 7, 1 is an example of that one. Verse 4, or verse 4, <laughs> definition 4. One who pretends to foretell, pretends to foretell, an imposter as a false prophet. Acts 13, 6, or false prophets, past tense. Now, the example it gives of these two is Sadducees, they don't believe in the resurrection. Pharisees, they rejected their king that was prophesied in the Old Testament. So, Sadducees and Pharisees back then are false prophets. And today we have Sadducees and Pharisees that will reject future prophecies. Uh, so they're prophesying that it's not going to happen. Um, so, the description that I put down is number two. Okay, False prophets today, okay, uh, let's go through some verses real quick, and then we'll talk about it. Matthew, because remember, like I said, going through Peter, I went through this, and God's like, hey, this kind of relates to this over here. We can apply it in instruction righteousness today and compare it with other scripture. Just going here alone, grabbing one thing and saying, this is the way it is. Got to be careful with that. So Matthew 7.15, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Verse 16, Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? 17, Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bringeth forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire, whereby by their fruits ye shall know them. Okay, one of the biggest things about false prophets today and is the they're trying to predict when Jesus Christ is going to come back for the bride, for the body of Christ to take us home. The catching the proper term is the catching away of the body of Christ. Uh, the pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catching away the body of Christ. And they're trying to predict it. And how do you know that they're false prophets? The date they set, ha did it happen? No. And what they do is, is they try to cover their butts, as they say, well, I wasn't actually saying it was going to happen. I was just trying to teach you what other people were teaching. Or, well, you know what, I messed up on my calculation, you know. Uh, it's actually going to happen next year at this date. Or actually, I miscalculated six months from now. Or I miscalculated it wasn't this day, it's the next day. Yeah, 
You'll know them by their fruits. Okay. Um, another one, uh, the pre-time of Jacob's trouble, they go against that. And you look at the fruits of post-trib and mid-trib, and it's they're preparing for the Antichrist, their attitude towards the Jews, which that will come in later too, and the fruits, you'll know them by their fruits. Okay? They're not looking for Jesus Christ to come back for the body of Christ. They're looking for the Antichrist. So false prophets telling you that, remember, Sadducees, they denied the resurrection. False prophets are coming in and denying the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Why does Satan want these false prophets doing this? to deceive, save ones, and get them to fall away, and, God, and Satan can use them to teach false gospels, false, uh, go against the um, time of Jacob's trouble, pre-time pre of Jacob's trouble, catching away the body of Christ, and get them to turn and start preaching post-trib, mid-trib. Now don't get me wrong, people who fall away and start doing that, God is going to convict you through the Holy Spirit. He's going to start chasing some of those people. And I've noticed people that have fallen away and done that, and then they've come back to truth because God chastens them. And I'm pretty sure there's some of them out there that God will chase them to the point where they won't listen, and God will kill them and bring them home early, and they'll miss out on rewards. So, um, whereby their fruits you shall know them. Satan's plan with his false converts is to pull people away from truth. To get people to be so disappointed that they stop looking for Jesus Christ to come back. They start looking for the Antichrist. Uh, get people to turn their back on the true gospel. Okay. First John, if you want to turn to 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Okay. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. And we talked about the date setters. Remember, by their fruits. If they set a date and it doesn't happen, they're false prophets. You have nothing to do with them. Period. No matter what their excuse is. We are not to be date setters. Okay? No man knoweth the day or the hour. Uh, had a false teacher say that, and then further down in his teaching when he's date setting, he says, I believe you can. No man knoweth the day or the hour, I believe you can. He called Jesus a liar, and people still follow him. Why? Because Satan loves false converts. He loves uh, false teachers, okay? Because they bring in and they make more false converts, which I'm getting ahead of myself. Because going back to Matthew 24, 36, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, know not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. My Father only. Talking about God the Father. And yet, these people that claim to be Bible-believing, God-fearing men, and some women probably, can't put it past them, um, are trying to be date-setters. Okay? No Bible-believing Christian will be a date-setter. And I believe that some people that are Bible-believing Christians can be swept away by that, by the date setting. Oh, it's so, they make it sound so fascinating and so neat and so cool, you know, and you can be swept away by it. But God will get you back on track where you're like, Lord, I'm sorry, no man knoweth the day or hour, please forgive me. 1 Thessalonians 5, 2, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. And the reason I threw that in there is because if you don't believe in the pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away the body of Christ, you can time out when the day of the Lord is. Roughly time it out. Okay? You can know, okay, it's, it's, we know, not just we're hoping like today, we're hoping that to, is today the day, Lord? Remember my teaching, you're not supposed to say, Lord, come today. You say, you can say, is today the day, Lord? Am I ready for you to come back today? Okay, it's very important that you guys do that. Don't start going, the Lord needs to come back today. Lord, why aren't you coming back today? You know, telling the Lord what to do. But you got a lot of false prophets out there. Okay? Satan wants to bring in false prophets to bring in damnable heresies, getting people to deny the Lord that bought them. Okay? Um... Preaching, uh, getting people to go against the pre-time of Jacob's trouble. Okay. That's, the big, that's a big one right there. Um, 
And here's another one. They're also given ammunition to the lost world to mock Bible-believing Christians. And people, the lost world mocking you is yet another um, cares of the world, stress, temptation, ways of trying that Satan uses to try to push you away from truth. I just, some people just, I get so tired of people mocking me. Uh, you lose your temper, you start getting bitterness in your heart, which leads to anger, which leads to hate. Um, so they're using that. Um, so you got false prophets that pull you away from the pre-time of Jacob's trouble, and I believe they're saved people that fall away. And they in turn turn around, but why does Satan want false converts? Because he creates false prophets. And if he has false prophets, he can pull you away from truth. The future prophecies. Um, a big one is Steve Anderson, uh, post-trib. The fruits of his post-trib is he hates the Jews. A uh, replacement theology. Um, the church is going through the time of Jacob's trouble because we deserve it and we need to be purified. That's Catholic. Okay? The Catholic Church does the same thing. Uh, they're totally against the pre-time of Jacob's trouble. I think it was, they were between 200 to 400 AD. There's letters showing that the Catholic Church condemned this teaching. That the body of Christ is leaving before the time of Jacob's trouble. That seven year time period is called the time of Jacob's trouble. The only time it's a title is the time of Jacob's trouble, and I think it's the first three and a half years or the full time where it talks about Daniel's, Daniel's 70th week. Those are the only two titles for that seven year time period. Okay? That's it. Not the Great Tribulation. So you get them coming in, they change the title, and they get you to stop looking for Jesus Christ. That's one of your crowns of reward is looking for the coming of Jesus Christ. And it's not just sitting there looking up in the sky. It goes back to what I told you, brothers and sisters. You look up and you say, Lord, am I ready for you to come back today? That's part of the crown of reward, I believe, when it comes to looking forward to the coming of Jesus Christ to catch his bride away. Okay? They're trying to steal that crown of reward. Um, we talked about that brother, uh, not brother, um, false teacher, Robert Breaker, who's doing a lot of predictions. And it's not just Robert Breaker. There's a lot of people out there trying to predict when the coming uh, of Jesus to catch his bride away. Okay? And they are, you know, they're false prophets. And what they're doing, Satan's using them, and even save people that fall away and start falling into it, Satan's using the false converts to pull people away from truth, and he's using them to get you to stop looking for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, to catch his body away. You get so disappointed. Well, it didn't happen today. Well, this is the 500th prediction, you know, since the very beginning. And, you know, if he still hasn't come, I just don't think he's going to come. I think we are going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. By their fruits you shall know them. Uh, it's one thing, here's another thing I want to throw in there, because I'm not against, I see, it's one thing to notice the signs of the times and Bible prophecy coming to pass, you know, Israel becoming a nation, uh, the world becoming like Sodom and Egypt, and we definitely see that today. There's nothing wrong with saying these are Bible prophecies, and you know, it, the coming of the Lord's coming. It's it's getting closer and closer. There's nothing wrong with doing that. It's when you're trying to pick a specific date, saying the Lord's coming this day. He's coming this day, and here's all the proof. And they're going to apocryphal books. They're going outside the Bible to try to prove the date. You know, they can't prove it by the scriptures. They have to go outside the Bible. But once again, um, I wouldn't use Mark 13, 32 because it's another passage which says, But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. So we have false prophets. We today, a brother in Christ, uh, Brother Brian at King James Video Ministries, he did a teaching, and I can't remember, I think it was the Revelation Instruction of Righteousness, or he did a completely separate teaching. If one of you guys remembers the, the study, if you can link it down in the comment section, if I can find it, I'll link it, you know, like I do underneath uh, as I'm talking. 
um, where he talks about how we are prophets today. And your first thought is, we're prophets today? Well, when you preach the gospel and you tell people that Jesus died for their sins, and if they die in their sins, they're going to go to the white throne, great white throne judgment. They're going to have to answer, you know, kind of like pay for their sins. They're going to be held accountable to the law, not the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, but the law. And they're going to go to hell and burn for all eternity. Now, is that prophesying the future? If they die in their sin, if you die in your sins, you are going to go to hell. If you reject Jesus Christ, you want nothing to do with Jesus Christ, you refuse to repent, you refuse to confess both in prayer and call upon the name of the Lord, you are going to die in your sins and you are going to go to hell. If you die in your sins, you're going to go to hell. Is that not a prophesying of the future? Yeah. I mean, while they're alive, they have every chance, God's given them every chance to get saved. But if they die in their sins, they're going to hell. That's us prophesying. Um, we take the Bible and say, hey, Jesus is coming back for his bride before the time of Jacob's trouble. Are we pro not prophesying? We have faith in the Bible. The Bible says it. It's truth. Are we prof prophets today? I believe we are. Now, we're not prophets in the sense that tomorrow you're going to trip and fall on your butt. No. But we are prophets when we preach in the gospel. We're prophets when we tell about the pre-time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? And there might be other parts. Um, so that's the false prophet side. Why does Satan want false prophets? To get you to turn your back on looking for Jesus Christ is coming. Okay? Um, get you to turn against the pre-time. I mean, mainly it's the main part, I think, the false prophets today is to get you to turn your back on when Jesus is coming back. Don't lose your crown reward. Uh, this faith alone crown, um, like I said, looking for the crown, just want to iterate it again, looking, not crown, looking for the coming of Jesus Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. The crown of reward there, I believe, is based on you look at the Lord, look at your life and say, Lord, am I ready for you to come back today? There's always something you can do. I'm not saying I'm ready, but I'm saying that's the attitude. That's what it means to look, look for the coming of Jesus Christ. Am I ready for him to come back today? So many people get tired of how the world is and they just want him to come back, but they won't look at their life and say, Lord, am I ready for you to come back today? Is my heart right with you? Is my home a godly home? Am I standing for the right things? Standing for the written word of God. So, um, so the next part, teachers. Talks about false teachers. We look up the definition of teacher. An instructor, a preceptor, a tutor, one whose business or occupation is to instruct others. And I had to, when I read this, I'm talking to the Lord, and I'm like, yeah, whose business, how many people that are professing, Bible-believing, God-fearing, or professing to be Bible-believing, God-fearing, they've turned their teaching into a business? How many of the false world, like the faith alone crowd, um, you can't be a Bible-believer and a faith alone. You just can't. The Bible doesn't teach that you're saved by your faith. It doesn't. You can't be works to be saved and be a Bible-believer. Because you can't trade all your good works for God's grace. Okay? Um, but these false battle buildings, how they become a business. And they really aren't teaching much. They're teaching a lot of heresies, but they're really not teaching much. It's just pleasing the flesh, like a social club. Definition number two one who instructs others in religion, a preacher, a minister of the gospel. That's the main one. Uh, definition number three, one who preaches without regular ordination. So, a false teacher here is talking about someone who is, is teaching a false religion, you know, teaching false doctrine, um, preaching wrong, a minister of the gospel, so a false teacher is preaching a false gospel, you know, like faith alone, works to be saved. Someone told me... Um, I think it was Rod of Iron that uh, I don't, I haven't 
watched a lot of his stuff, but what I have seen is good. I've only seen very little. Um, but one of the things he stated that he made was that the gospel, you have the, for our true gospel, repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer and call upon the name of the Lord to save you. We're in the middle. To the, you know, above us, you have the faith alone crowd. It's faith alone. I'm saved by my faith. I've earned God's grace. Give me it. They look at us and say we're works-based. Well, you guys are works-based. You have the people down here that are works-based. You know, you have to do enough good works to be saved and die in a state of grace. They look at us and say we're easy believism. Satan's doing everything he can using false teachers to turn people away from the truth. Satan doesn't want people getting the true gospel. So he uses false converts getting them to believe they're saved under a false gospel so they can promote, he can use them to promote and create more false converts. He can use them to pull people away that are saved, saying maybe, you know, I, I, I believe I'm saved, but this part was the only thing that mattered. Faith was the only thing that mattered. You know, he can pull people away. First, but here's the thing, are we supposed to have teachers? So, anybody, brothers and sisters of Christ out there say, well, yeah, we are. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondary prophets. So yes, we do have prophets. Thirdly, teachers, after the miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversity of tongues. Now I'm not going to go into depth, okay? Uh, gifts of healing, I believe today, is somebody who does, studies herbs, medicines, can set arms, you know, be broken bones, uh, you know, like doctors. Okay, that's, they have, God gives them a gift that they know how to do it. they got great memories because it takes a lot of you know, good memory to study and be like that. Um, uh, miracles, uh, a lot of miracles happen in my life. God does a lot of things in my life. He does it through the brothers and sisters in Christ. And um, sometimes He helps me do things and I'm like, thank you Lord, it's a miracle. But I'm not going to get a diversity of tongues. It's talking about different languages, people learning multiple languages. Verse 29. Are all apostles, are all prophets, remember we're talking about teachers here, um, are all supposed to be teachers, okay? Are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, okay? Um, Remember, speaking in tongues to interpret has to do with what it said there, the gift of speaking in tongues. I might not speak Spanish, but there might be a brother in Christ that's sitting next to me, and I speak English, they interpret into Spanish. The person speaks Spanish back to me, they interpret back into English. But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Covet. When you realize God has blessed you with the gift, don't let it go to waste. Use it. God's going to call people. Do this. You're going to be great at music. You're going to be great at teaching. There's people that are way better at uh, preaching the gospel. Um, walk, having the courage to walk up to people saying, here's a gospel track. Can I tell you about Jesus Christ? I'm working on that. I, I'm getting to the point where I'm handing people gospel tracks. Um, most of the time, I would just, anytime I go to town, I leave gospel tracks everywhere. Um, but fall, uh, we're supposed to have teachers. But they're supposed to teach according to the written word of God. And why does Satan want false teachers? Uh, false converts that are false teachers? So they can pull you away from truth. So they can confuse people. Um, why does Satan use false converts to pull true converts away from truth? Uh, because then God will have to punish them. They'll miss out on rewards. Uh, because if somebody that is truly saved falls away from truth, they're more likely to get more, you know, to go after saved people and try to get them pulled away. More um, able to do it than someone who's false. I can see some, right through a false convert in the sense that I, I, I think they're saved. I looked at the Bible. No, they're not. Even Paul was deceived by false brethren. But for him to be able to say they're false brethren, the fruit starts showing, and he said, you know what, they're false. 
They didn't fool them for long or they didn't fool them forever. Ephesians 4.11, if you have the Holy Ghost in you, you'll see through them eventually. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. Okay, Satan doesn't want the saints to be perfected. Uh, for the work of the ministry, he doesn't want, he loves his ministry, but he doesn't want God's ministry to go any f further. For the edifying of the body of Christ, he doesn't want to edify the body of Christ. He wants to pull people away from Christ. And he uses false converts to do it. Till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Knowledge, okay, he doesn't want us to know who God is and have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. How many people today that are claiming to be a Bible-believing Christian that say that you're not to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? They're not saved. Nobody with the Holy Spirit in them would say that. Unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stat stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. One of the goals of these false converts is they like to toss you to and fro. And carried away with every wind of doctrine, false doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Okay, slight of men and cunning craftiness. Uh, these Babel buildings, they get these nice buildings that just look so nice, and you've got the pulpit, and you walk in the building, and you know, the seats and the pews, everything just looks so nice, and the guy stands up there in his nice suit and tie, and his hair's combed, and the guy is shaved. And I'm not against guys who want to shave, but I'm just saying so many people attack people that want to teach the Word of God that have beards. Um, but they use uh, slight of men, you know. They're, they're deceiving people because they look great on the outward appearance. Remember what Jesus said about the Pharisees. On the outside, uh, they look like whited sepulchers, but on the inside, they're full of dead man's bones. Um, the cunning craftiness uh, with words, seduction, um, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. What I believe the lying in wait part is, is you'll have ministries that just start up, they're Bible-believing ministries, they'll start out by preaching truth. They will, they'll start out by preaching to, truth. But the cunningness and, where, and the lying in wait is over time, once they've got enough people drawn in, yeah, I'm a Bible believer, I'm a Bible believer, they start straying from truth. They start bringing in damnable heresies. They slowly creep it in. And the next thing you know, these people bought it hook, line, and sinker. And then at that point, someone like me or another brother or sister in Christ just goes over there to take a look at them and see how they are. They're like, this guy's false because they can already see it. But at the beginning of their ministry, oh, I'm true. I'm a Bible-believing Christian. And they do teach the truth at first. That's them lying in wait. And when they've got the hooks in everybody, got all of them to lift them up as the man, you know, worship the man, not the Word of God and Jesus Christ, but the teacher or the false prophet, they're lying in wait to deceive. So we're supposed to have teachers, but we need to be careful to check their fruits and compare what they say with Scripture. As Satan, through his false teachers, can sow bad seeds, false gospels, false doctrines, then he knows it will be harder for them to come to the knowledge of the truth. It's one thing to say, I don't know what truth is, show me what truth is. And you go to the Bible, or you, a brother and sister in Christ says, hey, here's some scripture. Not, this is what it is, trust me, here's some scriptures that will help you. Here's some Bible teachings that go scripture after scripture after scripture, comparing scripture with scripture. Can I say scripture again? <laughs> it's that important. Um... And then it's another thing for someone to say, take my word for it, and they chop up the Bible, and you got someone that says, I know what truth is. And when you come to them and say, hey, you, you know, you're part of a false gospel. You need to stand for the true gospel. Well, I know the truth. I ain't gonna, they don't come to the tr knowledge of the truth. That's the whole point of false converts, preaching false gospels. Um, people who say, I've been told that the was it post-trib is the way to go. 
and you come and you show them all these scriptures, and they've been taught year for years, it's post-trib, it's post-trib. So you come to them and show them the truth. It's pre-time of Jacob's trouble. The Great Tribulation is not a title for that seven-year period, and the only way, to, and the best way to debunk all that is just to use the proper title, the time of Jacob's trouble. God's going back and dealing with Israel in that seven-year time period. Okay? It's about Israel. And, you know, they won't come to the knowledge of truth once lies have been embedded. You know, the seeds, sowing seeds, bad seeds. That's what the false converts want. That's why Satan loves his false converts, false teachers, uh, false prophets. And the ones that are purposely false, you know what, they know they're not saved, they don't care about being saved, they're in it for the money, the control, the prestige, the power. Those aren't as dangerous to me. I don't believe those guys are as dangerous as the ones that believe they're saved and they're promoting heresies, a false gospel. Okay, those are the dangerous ones. Why? Because it's harder for them to come to the knowledge of the truth. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26, And journeyed often in perils of water, and perils of robbers, and perils by mine own countrymen, and perils by the heathens, and perils in the city, and perils in the wilderness, and perils in the sea, okay, and perils among false brethren. And I stopped there, but some just came to me. What I just said before, um, the more peril that we have, and Satan uses the lost world, he uses false converts, he can even pull truly Bible-believing, saved people away from truth, and he can use all this peril and uh, mocking and all this stuff, and we'll get into that a little bit more of that later, but to pressure, that's the word, pressure. All this stuff he can use as pressure to attack true Bible-believing Christians trying to get them away from absolute truth. But Paul says that, you know, false brethren came in. And back to what I'm saying, if we're not allowed to judge, how did Paul, was, why did Paul say they're false brethren? If we're not allowed to judge, why did Paul say they're false brethren? And, we talk, we've talked about earlier, by their fruits you shall know them. I believe eventually their colors shown, their true colors, as they say, started showing, and Paul pointed them out and said, you're false, get out of here. They came in, they did damage. When you have false converts come in, that's why it's important that you do not fellowship with the lost world. Okay, you do not invite lost people in, but what's dangerous is when you invite a false convert in, um, the best example is Brother Brian at King James Video Ministries, um, a few years back, um, you had a lot of people coming on his channel promoting Robert Breaker. And, oh, I'm saved, I'm saved. And I look back and I'm saying, well, Robert Breaker back then taught faith alone. It's just faith alone. You just believe in your head and you're saved. When the Bible says you're supposed to believe in your heart. No, it's just in your head. And you can't believe in your heart unless you repent. Because repent happens in your heart. True biblical repentance. It's just in your head. And yet King James Video Ministries... It, it, they pre preached repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. You confess both in prayer and you call upon the name of the Lord to save you. What was going on there? Satan was using false converts and infiltrating them in. And when, the, when, when Brother Brian came out with a video proving that Robert Breaker teaches a false gospel, he's lost, proving he's lost, but if anything, that he proved that Robert Breaker teach and taught a different gospel than he does. Two different Gospels. Only one can be right. And yet you had so many people that were supporting both ministries. What is that? False converts came in. And when that came out, they kept promoting before that Robert Breaker, Robert Breaker, Robert Breaker, so much that they've done, they did damage. They came in and they did damage. They left. Some, a lot of them were kicked out they, as far as the comment section. And they turned their back on King James Video Ministries and went back to Robert Breaker because that's who they supported to begin with. You had a lot of hypocrites. Robert Breaker, it's faith alone. Anybody teaches differently, they're lost. Praise the Lord, Brother Breaker. Then over at King James Video Ministries, it's repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Confess both in prayer and call upon the name of the Lord. Anybody teaches differently, they're lost and they're on their way to hell. You're amen. That's true. Brother Brian, amen. 
Okay? A, it's hypocrites, and I believe that was done so false brethren came in and they did damage. False brethren, perils among false brethren is they come in and they do damage every time. They're going to pull people away. That's why it's so important to stay in the Word of God. But when you have false teachers, false prophets, they pull you away from the Word of God. They make a mess of the Bible. They start bringing out outside sources. They start using terms outside the Bible. They take away titles for God and add titles for pagan gods. You know, if you know all about that. So, Galatians 2.4. The book of Galatians is a great example of false brethren, Satan using uh, false converts. Uh, Galatians chapter 2, verse 4. And that because of false brethren unaware brought in who came in privily to spite out your liberty which was which we have in Christ Jesus that they might bring us into bondage. Now in the book of Galatians it's talking about them trying to bring him back under the law. Um, so when Peter was there it's by faith you know God's grace uh, is a gift. You're saved by God's grace through faith. Faith and it takes faith to repent, faith to believe in the finished work of Jesus on the cross, faith to confess both in prayer to a God you can't see, uh, and to call upon the name of the Lord and have faith that He can save you. Okay. But then when He was gone, these false converts were coming in saying, "Well, it's faith and works. You know, you've got to you know keep the law, you know, the Levitical laws and stuff." So. And then when Paul came there, the damage was done. A lot of people were damaged when false converts come in, but Paul set them straight. So, denying the Lord that bought them talks about the mess. You, okay, I did talk about the, the next study I'll do. Uh, it's probably going to call, be called, um, Did Jesus pay for the sins of the lost world or did he die for the sins of the lost world? Something along there. And I got in a mess because I was just trying to throw, it's not, just throw some things out there real quick. And like I said, when I started doing the study and I was shocked, uh, I was wrong on how I presented it. And I got myself in a little bit of a mess. So, got to make sure we're not denying the Lord that bought us. And we're not going over to the enemy's side and we start preaching damnable heresies. Uh, we got to watch out for false converts that do that. True, like I said with Apostle Paul, us Bible-believing Christians, true Bible-believing Christians see right through them after a while, and they stay away from them. I keep telling brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, this person might be good, and I go and watch and see them off on one thing that's major, I tell them to stay away from them. Well, they're off in that one point, but over here they do great teachings on this stuff over here. It doesn't matter how much truth they preach. They preach a false gospel, stay away from them. They preach post-trib, stay away from them. They go against eternal security, stay away from them. I don't know how many times I can say that. Yeah, but he does great teachings on instruction and righteousness. Oh, he stands for pre-trib. He's faith alone, but you're saved by your faith. It's not God's grace that you're saved by, it's your faith. And But he teaches the pre-time Jacob's trouble. Doesn't matter. If they're off anywhere on major doctrine like we just talked about up here about they lie in wait to deceive. They preach some truth, or a lot of truth at first, but then they start bringing in damnable heresies to draw people away. It's not something that happens instantly. If I was to come out instantly and say you can lose your salvation, how many of you brothers and sisters in Christ would laugh at me and have nothing to do with me? Now if I came out and said that we are sealed into the day of redemption, it's eternal security. But after a while, I say, well, I still believe in eternal security, but you might be able to. I, I can understand their argument about how it works today, and you can lose your salvation. And I believe it, but I believe that. It's different to say I have some verses I can't explain. I believe in eternal security, but I have verses that I just I can't explain. It's another thing to say, well, I'm going to do a teaching and I'm going to say that it's eternal security, but, you know, there's tons of these other verses, and they're using Bible perversions, because you won't find it in the Bible that it's works to be saved. Um, faith alone works to be saved, I believe, because you earned it with your faith. And 
uh, Workspace Salvation, obviously by the name. Uh, they're doing works to be saved. Um, works to be saved, okay? Not workspace, but works to be saved. Because that's like, I don't want to do a title that's not in the Bible. It talks about how people are trying to do works to be saved in the Bible. But, um, I keep telling them that, okay, you started out with eternal security, hardcore, then you start wavering, well, it's, it's, it's eternal security, but you know this, and then before long, they're talking about how you can lose your salvation. I was wrong on eternal security. I was wrong on pre-time of Jacob's trouble. I was wrong on dispensational teaching. I was wrong on the Bible version issue. The King James Bible is okay, but it's not God's perfect written word. You know, it doesn't happen overnight. It happens over a period of time. They lie and wait to deceive. That's why when you see someone who's off on major doctrine, you correct them. They want nothing to do with truth. You stay away from them. 1 Timothy 6.5 prefers disputing of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. Okay? Stay away from them. Okay? Um, Edward P.F., he teaches a false gospel. He stands for a pagan god, the Trinity. You stay away from him. I don't care if he teaches something else where he's right on with it. You stay away from him. The fruit of his ministry is bitterness that leads to anger, that leads to hate. That's the main fruit of his ministry. It's all about attacking truth and attacking people. Uh, Robert Breaker, he teaches a false gospel. He's trying to predict the future. When Jesus is coming back, he's going outside the Bible, bringing in apocryphal books to prove the that Jesus could come back this day. You see this stuff in him. He stands for the pagan trinity, even after he's been rebuked, saying, Hey, I just don't get how people, how a Bible-believing Christian can take a title for God, capital G, Godhead, throw it in the garbage, and grab a title from the Catholic Church of a pagan God, capital T Trinity, and use that. How can a true, how can you call yourself a Bible believing Christian and turn your back on the Word of God? No Bible believing Christian would. I was corrected in using those terms. I was shown truth and I repented. So many Bible believers I've seen out there that repented, even some that were like, I'm standing for the Trinity, I don't know what you say. And I showed him the definition of the word person. Okay, I showed him in the Bible where there's only one God, capital G God, the Father. These three are one. I showed him scripture after scripture proving that it's the Godhead, it's not the Trinity. And they stopped and froze. I've had people just, if I could see them, I could see them sitting behind here going, it's not. And they read the definition of person and they're like, whoa. Hit him like a, you heard that saying, hits him like a ton of bricks. And they're like, wait a minute. A person has a body, soul, and spirit. And I came across a verse, I'll link it on Patreon, where it's talking about um, Jesus. When he comes and shows himself to him, he says, I can't be a spirit because a spirit doesn't have flesh and bones. So saying the Holy Spirit is a person is satanic. A spirit does not have flesh and bones. A person has a body, it has a soul, and it's always referred to someone who's living, a spirit. A person has all three of those. I'm a person. You're a person. Jesus Christ is the only person of the Godhead. I mean, but kind of going off a little bit. But you see someone like that, you stay away from them. You don't go, well, he does a great teaching on the pre-time of Jacob's trouble, so I'll keep watching for that. You don't watch them for anything. You stay away from them. When it's major doctrine that they're off on, you stay away from them. Pre-time of Jacob's trouble, eternal security, dispensational teaching, the true gospel, the true perfect written word of God in English. They're off in these areas. You stay away from them. 